we are going to learn the segments of the seventh cranial nerve or the facial nerve. Uh, this is supposedly the pons and this is a cerebellum. Uh, so this is a semi-schematic and axial section showing uh, the cranial nerve exiting from the pons and going to the temporal bone and leaving out. Suppose from here, the seventh nerve is exiting from the cerebellopontine angle like this. It is exiting like this and entering into the petrous part of the temporal bone. That is what is uh, shown with this faded lines. This is the petrous part of the temporal bone. This is the, uh, the, uh, the upper margin, the superior margin of the petrous temporal bone, which is the limit of the middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa. So it is entering into the internal acoustic meatus here. And from there, it is going through the intrapetrous course. And after that, it is exiting from the cranium to the extracranial course. The extracranial segment is the part that you find uh, leaving from the stylomastoid foramen entering into the parotid gland. Okay, that is the extracranial segment. So primarily there are three segments, the intracranial, the intratemporal and the extracranial. Now what happens here is this part is in the cerebellopontine cistern. So that is also called the cisternal segment. So this is the first part and that is called the cisternal segment. The cisternal segment slowly enters into the internal auditory meatus along with the eighth nerve and the labyrinthine vessels. From there, the seventh nerve goes through the intramiatal course. This is called the intramiatal course that is within the internal acoustic meatus. After that, it enters into the fallopian canal or the facial canal and that part is near the labyrinth, the, uh, the inner ear. Inner ear is called the uh, bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth. So that part is called the labyrinthine segment. So the, here the two segments that you need to know is two the meatal segment and three the labyrinthine segment. The labyrinthine segment is uh, above the vestibule. Suppose here you imagine the inner ear is here, the cochlea is in front and the semicircular canals are behind and the vestibule is between that. So the facial nerve is above the vestibule and that is called the labyrinthine segment. So I uh, just put the names here. One is the cisternal segment or the intracranial segment. Two is the meatal segment. Three is the labyrinthine segment, which is near the inner ear. And after that, it goes, you have a swelling over here and that is called the first genu of the facial nerve. And that is called uh, the geni, this is where you have the geniculate ganglion. And from there, it takes a turn like this. And this part is found, and this is the inner ear. Three is the uh, labyrinthine segment. What you find here is the middle ear. So from the middle ear on the medial wall, you will find the uh, facial nerve in the facial canal uh, related to the middle ear over here. This will be, will be learned in detail on the middle ear uh, medial wall features. And from here, I am going to put here as a dot okay, because from here it is going to descend down, descend down like this in this plane downwards towards the stylomastoid foramen. So this segment, the fourth segment is on the medial wall of the middle ear. And so that segment is called the tympanic segment because that part is in the middle ear. That is the tympanic segment. And next you have the part that descends downwards. And that is what I'm putting here. This is a dot. What I mean by dot is that it is descending downwards. And that is a vertical segment also called as the mastoid segment. That is the fifth segment, uh, the vertical segment or the mastoid segment. And the mastoid segment goes till the stylomastoid foramen, after which it and uh, it has its extracranial course where you have the five terminal branches, which we have dealt in another video. So that is the uh, the last segment. Suppose this is a stylomastoid foramen, which I can't show because that is actually below. Uh, so from the stylomastoid foramen, you have the sixth segment, that is the uh, the extracranial segment. That's the sixth segment. Sixth segment is the extracranial segment. So these are the uh, six segments of facial nerve. The first is the cisternal segment, the intracranial. The next is the meatal segment, which is in the internal auditory meatus. The third is the labyrinthine segment, which is over the inner ear. The fourth is the medial wall of the middle ear. So that is called the tympanic segment. And the fifth is the mastoid segment or the vertical segment. So here it is having an S-shaped and a three-dimensional turn. Like this it goes, it goes posteriorly, then it goes downwards. Okay, And after that it exits from the stylomastoid foramen and that is the extracranial segment. So these are the six segments of facial nerve.
this is a 3D model that I've created in a 3D software called Blender and uh, let us have a look at uh, this facial nerve segments that we've just learned. Uh, so this is the uh, again the right Peter's bone through which uh, the facial nerve went through. Uh, so these are the different segments of the facial nerve. I've color coded with the same uh, titles that I've used for the segments in the uh, video. Uh, so let us have a look at this part. This is the part that is coming from the brain in the cistern and that is called the cisternal segment. And that continues on to the part that is in the internal auditory meatus. This is the meatal segment. The meatal segment then enters into the fallopian canal or the facial canal. And that is the third segment called the labyrinthine segment. And this is where you have the inner ear. Okay. Uh, so here you have the cistern. This is the meatus. This is the inner ear. So this is the labyrinthine segment and that ends in a swelling and this swelling is called the uh, geniculate ganglion. Okay, there is a small swelling over there that is a geniculate ganglion. That, that, so th the geniculate ganglion marks the termination of the labyrinthine segment. Now from there you can see from the view from above, this is a superior view. From there it is taking a 90 degree turn. That's why it's called the first genu. And the first genu or the geniculate ganglion location marks the beginning of the tympanic segment now if this is the inner ear this is the middle ear on the medial view you can see the tympanic segment now i'll just have a turn like this to look from the middle ear view this is the view from the medial uh, middle ear uh, medial wall so this will be the tympanic segment then with the tympanic segment then uh, turns sharply downwards and that is the mastoid or the vertical segment and that is the fifth segment. This is what we call as the second genu uh, because this was the first genu. The first genu is can be clearly seen from a superior view between the labyrinthine and the tympanic segment uh, but the uh, second genu is better seen uh, on a sagittal view. Okay, this is a sagittal view in which you can see the tympanic segment that was running between the oval window and the lateral semicircular canal on the medial wall of the middle ear and that bends sharply onto the mastoid or the vertical segment. That is the fifth segment. The fifth segment ends at the stylomastoid foramen from where it uh, uh, emerges into uh, the parotid gland and where you have the extracranial branches, the posterior auricular uh, and also the temporal, zygomatic, buccal, marginal mandibular and the cervical branches. So all of them are the extracranial branches. So these are the six segments. First cisternal, meatal, labyrinthine, geniculate ganglion, the tympanic, the tympanic ends at the second genu from where you have the mastoid segment or the vertical segment that emerges out from the stylomastoid foramen.